Mark, you are the Executive Secretary of the Global Forum on Agricultural Research, the organizer of the G-Card, and you just spoke to participants during the closing session, giving an outlook how to take global programs forward. The conference paid special attention to innovative research for the benefit of smallholders. What have been the key issues discussed on this year in Punta del Este? Is there a particular outcome of central importance you would like to share? I think the key outcome is that we're really learning to do things differently. We're getting together all the sectors from farmers to advisors to public and private civil society looking at what we need to do better together how are we really going to make these changes that we set out two years ago happen in practice so the key outcome is that we're demonstrating that we're doing that across a whole range of, of disciplines a whole range of research and development themes in general research takes place on a quite abstract level how can research be linked to the livelihoods of rural smallholders in developing countries? In particular, how does GFAR ensure that the research success is not stuck and has an Im impact on the ground? I think the whole framing of what we're doing is bringing that about. We're putting the farmers not at the end of some pipeline of technological development, but right at the center of these processes. So smallholder farmers, who we know are 70% of the world's poor, are dealing with issues on the ground and research is engaged directly with their needs and their objectives. So that means that we're rethinking the way that our institutions work, the way our systems work, so that the farmers are absolutely pivotal to those processes and we're thinking about the outcomes of our research, not just the technologies and the products that we're producing. The research is a means to a development end. At GCAD 1 in 2010, the GCAD roadmap was agreed on. Looking back, what has been the most significant success regarding its agenda in the last two years? I think the first success is, is if we reflect back where we were perhaps 10 years ago, we had huge opposition between some of these sectors, between, for example, the civil society and the private sector, or between international actors and national systems. That's changing, and it's changing very fast. We're redefining the, the basis by which we all work. We're looking to share common goals and understand each other from the outset so that we know we're sharing the same objectives. The roadmap is, sets out how we can do that in practice, six key areas in which we need to really make a change, and six key areas, incidentally, that have been accepted by all sectors, which in itself is perhaps unique in bringing together people. So that roadmap covers the, the clear need to strengthen and transform the, the way we work in the way we generate new knowledge, the way we share new knowledge, the way we make use of new knowledge in changes at the farm level. The session in which you just gave your outlook already looked onto GCAR 2014. What are the priority areas of the roadmap that need to be addressed most urgently by agricultural researchers to strengthening rural development and overall food security in the future? Okay, well we've been looking at really quite a range of issues, some 20, essentially 20 workshops have run during these few days, all looking at key themes, climate change for example, um, food security, ones that are of global significance but local relevance, but also introducing some new issues that haven't been given so much highlight in the past and really are fundamental in development terms. Examples would be women. The role of women in agriculture has been highlighted through the SOFA report. We've put a very strong central emphasis on the role of rural women in this conference and that re-gears the whole way we think about what kind of research is needed, what kind of technologies are needed. Women don't necessarily, in, in rural areas, are not necessarily looking just for increased production. They're looking for reduced drudgery. They're looking for greater return from their market produce. Another example is nutrition. If we consider just food security to be, do we have enough tons of grain in a country, we miss completely the issue of, of child stunting, the issue of nutrient availability, the issue of and in fact, on the contrary, the obesity issue. And these are issues where we've got to really start looking at how nutrition is, is met, not just food security. The Global Donor Platform as a network of donor agencies recently published a synthesis paper titled Donor Methods to Prioritize Investments in Agriculture and Development. Why do you think donors should invest in agricultural research? And what research areas should have priority to donors in your opinion? Well, they should invest because it gives a phenomenal rate of return on that investment in development terms. In fact, we're in Uruguay here, which is a tremendous example of, of the investment value of agricultural research. Not just research. When we're talking about research, we're talking about these processes, extension, education, all the processes that are using agricultural knowledge in development. And when we talk about increased investment, in Uruguay, one dollar invested 
has been demonstrated to give a return of 17 to 20 dollars for every dollar invested that's a huge rate of return and, and not one that you're going to get in other areas and perhaps more fundamentally though aside from the economics of it if we don't address our food security now and we don't plan for the future and we don't have the foresight to look at the future needs frankly speaking we're going to be in quite a mess in 10 or 20 years time when we will not have the capacity to meet these increased population demands, the environmental change demands, and indeed the income levels of, of rural people that at the moment are driving them into the city slums and creating in themselves social unrest, civil strife, and so on. We have to create viable rural livelihoods, we have to mesh that with food security, and we have to mesh it with environmental sustainability. It's a big task, and that's why we've really got to work together to deliver that. Thank you.